بدأنا بسم الله وبالصلاة الله على رسول الله وآله الأبرار Begin with بسم الله and with صلاة الله upon رسول الله and his righteous family بدعنا بسم الله بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله Evil actions of the heart and the tongue Lecture number 20 and we are talking about the evil act of the tongue, lying. And this is the second meeting, talking about lying. يَقُولُ النَّبِيُّ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهُ وَسَلَّمُ مَنْ كَانَ يُؤْمِنُ بِاللَّهِ وَالْيَوْمِ الْآخِرُ فَلْيَقُلْ خَيْرًا أَوْ لِيَصْمِدْ Anyone who believes in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the Day of Judgment, he should say, good or be quiet. This is an Islamic principle and it is a fine scale when it comes to talking. Truthfulness is the pillar of prophethood and it is the origin of everything good. Without truthfulness, the legislations will be invalid. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told us that the opposite of truthfulness is lying and lying is a disease and it is a horrible manner and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said إِنَّمَا يَفْتَرِ الْكَرِبْ الَّذِينَ لَا يُؤْمِنُونَ بِآيَاتِ اللَّهِ وَأُولَٰئِكَ هُمُ الْكَرِبْ those people who don't believe in the signs of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala are the one who invent lies against Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and His Messenger. So lying about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and His Messenger is kufr. Ibn Kathir rahimahullah, interpret, uh, interpret, uh, interpreting the meaning of this ayah, he said, Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is not a liar. Because the liar is the one who lies about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his messenger. And those people are from the worst and the horrible evils on this earth. And he sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is the one with the absolute good man. He sallallahu alayhi wa sallam the most truthful among people. And he is the one with the most sound mind and he is the one sallallahu alayhi wa sallam with the most knowledge and with the most who act upon that knowledge and the one with the biggest iman, the biggest belief in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He was so good to the point that his people called him al Amin. This name was granted or was given to him by his enemies. It is not his mom or his dad or his relative called him Al-Amin. It is the people unanimously agreed upon his name Al-Amin. Forty years, that is the name that they called him with and used him. And this is very evident also when Abu Sufyan met with Hercules and he asked him about Prophet Muhammad sallallahu Hercules asked Abu Sufyan, he said, did he lie? Or did he ever lie before? He said no. So he was not even a believer at that time and he denied that Prophet Muhammad وسلم, ever lied. We are talking about the tongue. The tongue is very dangerous. 
Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, مَا يَلْفِضُ مِنْ قَوْلٍ إِلَّا لَدَيْهِ رَقِيبٌ عَتِيمٌ Every second word you utter is recorded, big or small. We have talked about lying and we said the worst kind of lying is to lie about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and His Messenger. And then to lie about your dream because dreams, good dreams from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, so it is related. Also to lie to people and uh, to talk about everything you hear from people is also lying. To lie when you are joking and to lie when you are uh, playing with children and the last thing we talked about is to lie when you are joking. What is the punishment, the consequences of lying? When a person lies, what is going to happen to him? We know lying is bad, but let us talk about some of those things that a person has to meet with and deal with and suffer as a consequence for lying. Number one, and nifaq fil qalb, hypocrisy in the heart. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, فَأَعْقَبَهُمْ نِفَاقًا فِي قُلُوبِهِمْ إِلَىٰ يَوْمِ يَلْقَوْنَهِ بِمَا أَخْلَفُ اللَّهَ مَا وَعَلُوهُ وَبِمَا كَانُوا يَكْذِبُونَ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala punished those people who made a promise with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to do certain things and then they broke their promise. It is because lying. As a result, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala punished them by putting hypocrisy in their heart until they meet him. Yeah, and they would live their life hypocrites and die as hypocrites and the punishment for a hypocrite is the worst punishment ever it is uh, in the depth of the hellfire. Abdullah ibn Mas'ud he said look at the hypocrite with three qualities when he talks, he lies, and when he promises, he breaks his promise, and when he is trusted, he breaks his trust. And then he recited the ayah that I have just recited. We know there's a hadith that talks about the same thing, but this is uh, another proof uh, for lying. So, hypocrisy in the heart for the people who lie is a possibility. Uh, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will punish them with. The second one, al hidaya ila al-fujur wa nar Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will guide the liar to become evil and eventually to go to hellfire. Listen to this beautiful hadith reported by Abdullah ibn Mas'ud radiallahu He said that Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, inna al-sidqa bir wa inna al-birra yahdi ila al-jannah. Sidq, truthfulness, is bir. Bir, in general, it means goodness. And in certain aspects, it means the best of the good things. And he added, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, And this bir, or this goodness, will lead to Jannah. وَإِنَّ الْعَبْدَ لَيَتَحَرَّ الصِّدْقِ حَتَّى يُكْتَبَ عِنْدَ اللَّهِ صِدِّيقًا And a slave or a person, a servant of Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Taala, will continue to tell the truth and work hard on telling the truth until his name is Siddiq with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Yani Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, basically the angels will not be saying, Muhammad is coming, Mahmud is coming, Adil is coming, it will be the Siddiq is coming, the Siddiq is coming. His name will be with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the angels, a Siddiq, like when Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa was with the people, they used to call him that instead of his name Muhammad. On the other hand, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, وَإِنَّ الْكَذِبَ fujur." Kadib is fujur. It is a sin. It's exceeding the limits. It's going outside the boundaries of goodness. And fujur guides to the hellfire. وَإِنَّ الْفُجُورَ يَهْدِي إِلَى النَّارِ وَلَا يَزَالُ الْعَبْدُ أَوْ وَإِنَّ الْعَبْدُ وَإِنَّ الْعَبْدَ لَا يَتَحَرَّ الْكَذِبْ حَتَّى يُكْتَبَ عِنْدَ اللَّهِ كَذَّابًا And the person continues to laugh. It could start from a joke. It could start with dealing with children. It could start with just messing around. And you do it once, twice, 
You get used to it until you're able to get there. It's not Muhammad is coming, it's not Adam is coming, it is the liar is coming. This is how the angels uh, would uh, be calling the person. And Imam al-Sana'ani rahimahullah, he said, in this hadith, it is, uh, there's a hint in it that the person can exert effort on being good and telling the truth and continue to tell the truth in his actions until it becomes a quality of his. This is his quality. He cannot lie because this is what he trained himself to be. Vice versa, he can do the same thing when he is lying. He continues to lie until he becomes a liar. Now when a person does that, it tells you how when a person works hard to become a truthful person. It tells you the virtue of being truthful. When, when it guides you to bear, to goodness, and then eventually go to Jannah. What a reward. And when you know that lying is such a horrible thing that guides you and leads you to the hellfire. What a horrible punishment for the person who insists on lying. This is for the hereafter. What about for this dunya? In this world, a person who is truthful, people accept him. People like him. People accept his testimony. People accept his stories. And he is loved and wanted among people. No one, Muslim or non-Muslim, believer in Allah or not believer in Allah, would hate an honest person. Being honest is loved in this dunya and this is uh, the reward for those people who are truthful. Anyone who testifies, one of the testimony conditions he has to be truthful. If a person wants to narrate hadith, he has to be truthful. Everything will be rejected. When you lie to someone so many times, he will stop listening to you. Or he will listen to you but he will not buy anything that you are saying. So you will be rejected and that is the punishment for the person who is a liar in this dunya. The third thing that the person needs or will suffer from lying, Rabbu Shahada, his testimony will be rejected. Qalab al-Qayyim, Aqwa al-Asbab fi Rabbi al-Shahada wal Futiya wal Riwaya al-Kidim. Among the biggest reasons for rejecting testimony and giving legal opinions and narrating hadith is lying. Lying, if you look in the uh, science of hadith, one lie, a person one lies, his hadith is rejected even if he's telling the truth. If it is affirmed that this person lied before, imagine, imagine if you think about ourselves how many times we lie. And then you look why we are talking about the Sahaba and giving them this great status. And why we are talking about the scholars and giving them this great status when they report the hadith. Those scholars was not a single lie knew, known, has been known about them, otherwise their report would be rejected. So this is uh, whom they are. And he, Ibn Qayyim rahimahullah said, he said, كَذِبْ فَسَادْ فِي نَفْسْ آلَةِ الشَّهَادِ وَالْفُتْيَ Now this is the weapon or this is the instrument of testimony, the body, the person. Now telling the truth or lying is a quality. It is in that instrument. So if the person is a liar, then this instrument is malfunctioning. It's not working properly because there's a defect in it. This is like having uh, something, a motor or something, and there is something going wrong and it doesn't work. So the person who is a liar, will be, his testimony will be rejected. It is like a blind person testifying or witnessing seeing something. He's blind. Or a deaf person listening to the testimony of someone and affirming that. How can you? The instrument is malfunctioning. The same thing, the person who is a liar, he is the same way malfunctioning, so he will be rejected. 
Another aspect here that a person will suffer from lying, سواب الوجه في الدنيا والآخرة. The darkening of the face in this dunya and in the hereafter. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said the day of judgment. ويوم القيامة ترى الذين كذبوا على الله وجوههم مسودة. The day of judgment you will recognize the people who had lied against Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and His Messenger by their faces being darkened the day of judgment. Ibn Qayyim rahimahullah said, he said the day of judgment, the slogan of the liar is his face. His face will be very dark, very black. Everyone, the day of judgment, who is qualified, who had done good, his face is white. يَوْمَ تَبْيَضُّ وَجُوهُ وَتَسْوَدُّ وَجُوهُ The people of the Sunnah, the people who follow the path of Prophet Muhammad wasallam, their faces will be white, and those who went the other way will be dark. And those people, in fact, who lie. One point I'd like to elaborate a little bit about it's the dark and the white, the black and the white. We know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala looks at the heart of the people. We know Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not deal with people based on color. <laughs> the color of the person is irrelevant to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He is the creator and He created us with different colors. The reason I wanted to mention a little bit because one uh, brother who was new to Islam, uh, he suffered a lot from uh, discrimination, lived all of his life here, and discrimination between black and white. And at one point he said, why in Islam always bad things associated with black? And he was, he was taking it in a negative way. Now as I mentioned, number one, number one, keep in mind, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not look at your skin. Number two, the black, the darkened, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said their faces are darkened, it's different than saying black. Because you can actually look at a black person who is truthful and you see the whiteness in his face. And you can look at a black person who is a liar or he is far away from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and you see the blackness of his face. You can look at a pure white person and you will say that his face is so black simply because he is far away from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So these are things very common and people can relate to it. You can see black people, their faces is radiating light. And you see the other way, white people, their faces is so dark. Another thing is, not all the time, bad things associated with uh, black. For instance, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, وَبْيَضَّتْ عَيْنَاهُ مِنَ الْحُزْنِ فَهُوَ كَظِيمٌ Ya'qub alayhi salam, when he cried for his son, Yusuf alayhi salam, and the other one, Binyamin. What, did, what happened to him? He continued to cry, to cry until his eyes became white. Is this something good? He went blind. Darkness in the eye is a beauty. Darkness in the eye is a source of light. Yet when this darkness goes away, it is uh, blindness. Give you another one. Hijab. When it comes to hijab, hijab al marqa al aswad أفضل من حجاب المرأة الأبيض. The black clothes of a woman in hijab is much better than the white clothes of another woman with hijab. And we know that the companions, uh, wives of the Allah عنهم, that when the verse of hijab was revealed, they were completely covered in black. Give you another one. People with high status, president and such, their beautiful cars, what color? Black. So black is a sign of prestige also. You don't find a purple car or a red car coming for the president or something like that. It is always black. So uh, I, I would like to, I, I wanted to uh, clarify this a little bit because 
unfortunately, our lack of understanding what is white and what is black, we take it just uh, as we see it. But really, you can see a lot further or behind the skin when someone is obedient or someone is disobedient. So, Ahsan, the black stone. طيب another one. الكلم له تأثير كما قلنا على سواد الوجه يراه كل صادق فسيم الكلم في وجهه ينادي عليه the sign of the person who is disobedient whether he is white or he is black the darkness in his face is screaming loud telling you this person is not an obedient person you know how you see someone you say والله I feel good when I see you or your face is bringing good news. This is something that we know. A punishment also for those people who lie. Shaqo shidq al-kadir ila qafah. Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. In his dream, angels took him in a trip, as reported by Samura ibn Jundu. يقول كان أو قال كان رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم مما يكثر أن يقول لأصحابه حرى أحد منكم من ربيا. He used to صلى الله عليه وسلم ask his companions a lot if anyone had a dream. Then at one time he صلى الله عليه وسلم said أتان الليلة أتيان. Two angels came to me tonight. وإنهما ابتعثاني. وإنهما قال لي انطلق. They sent after me. They came to me and they said, let's go. فانطلقنا فأتينا على رجل مستلق لقفاه وإذا آخر خائر عليه بكلوب من حديد وإذا هو يأتي أحد شقي وجهه فيشرشر شدقه إلى قفاه. He said, we came to a person lying on his back and another person standing over him he is getting a hook made out of metal and he puts it inside his mouth one side of his mouth and he pulls it he rips it all the way to his back then he does the other side then he does it in his nose and he rips it then on the other side of the nose and he rips it then he Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam mentioned in his eye and he would rip it all the way to the back and with his other eye the same way. He does it in one side, then he goes and moves to the other side. As soon as he finishes this side, he goes to the other side. When he finishes the other side, the first side is healed. What does he do? He goes back to it. And rip it again. This is a continuous punishment for the person who lies. This is a punishment that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's messenger told us that the person will, will get for lying. And then he asked Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa the angel, and he told him, uh, the angel, he told him, إِنَّهُ الرَّجُلْ يَرْدُ مِنْ بَيْتِهِ فَيَكْذِبُ الْكَلِبَةِ he said, this is the person who leaves his house. He says the lie that goes way up in the sky. You know, one word can destroy a family. One word can, can actually destroy a community. One word can start a war. It is, subhanAllah, look at the power of the tongue and the power of the words that we use all the time. You can injure someone really bad with one word. And this injury is worse than hitting him or doing any kind of injury to him different than words. Words when you injure a person doesn't heal. It takes a long time and it will never heal actually. The person may forgive you but the effect is there. The wound is there. As the poet says, جراحات اللساني جراحات السناني لها التئام ولا يرتام ما جرح اللسان The wounds of the swords and such, it will heal. 
but the wounds of the time it will not heal. Usually it makes us feel good when we see what the companions and the righteous predecessors said about those things. Let's see some of the sayings of the Salaf. Qala Abdullah ibn Mas'ud, Inna rajula la yasduq wa yataharra sidq hatta ma yakunu lil fujuri fi qalbihi mawda ibra yastakurru feeh. Wa innahu la yakdib wa yataharra kalib hatta ma yakunu lil sidq fi qalbihi mawda ibra yastakurru feeh. He said, Salaf radiyallahu an, Abdullah ibn Mas'ud, he said that the person says the truth and continues to say the truth until his heart is full of truthfulness. There is not a place of the tip of a needle in his heart for lies. It's all true. On the other hand, a person can lie and continues to lie until his heart is full of lies and there is no, no room in the heart for telling the truth. Basically, what is he saying? He's saying that once you continue on doing it, this is like the meaning of the hadith. It will be a quality for you and your name will be either a truthful or a liar. Also Abdullah ibn Mas'ud radiallahu anh said, لا يصلح الكذب في جد ولا هزل ثم تلا قوله تعالى يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله وكونوا مع الصادقة. Allah, if you reflect on this ayah by itself, O you who believe, be conscious, be righteous, be pious, be obedient, be servant to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and be with the truth. Be with the truth. وَلَا تُطِعْ كُلَّ حَلَّافِ الْمَهِينَ A person who swears constantly, lies to make people believe him. إِنَّ الَّذِينَ يَفْتَرُونَ الْكَلِبَ عَلَى اللَّهِ إِنَّ الَّذِينَ يَفْتَرُونَ عَلَى اللَّهِ الْكَلِبْ لَا يُفْلِحُونَ People will never succeed, those people who lie. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, إِنَّ اللَّهَ لَا يَهْدِي مَنْ هُوَ مُسْرِفٌ كَذَّابٌ A lying person will never be guided. So this is something that Abdullah ibn Mas'ud, look at the ayah. Be conscious, be obedient, and be with the truthful people. Why? Because truthful people look what they will be. وَمَن يُطِعِ اللَّهَ وَالرَّسُولِ فَأُولَٰئِكَ الَّذِينَ أَنْعَمَ اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِمْ مِنَ النَّبِيِّينَ وَالصِّدِّقِينَ فَالشُّهَدَاءُ الصَّالِحِينَ Obey Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and His Messenger, you will be blessed with those people. Number one, prophets. What's number two? Siddiqin, truthful people. Immediately, right after that, the truthful. So when you are with the truthful, this is your status. Why do you think Abu Bakr Siddiq was called a Siddiq? Because every time they say something about Prophet Muhammad wasallam, he believes it. No conditions. Did he say that? Yes. Let it be. That's what I believe in. And that's what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's messenger called him, a Siddiq. So those are the Siddiqin. This is the level, the level uh, the status that there will be the Day of Judgment next to the Prophets. He said, Abdullah ibn Mas'ud, lying is not good, whether it is serious, in yeah, serious situations, or in joking situations, and then he recited that. Abu Bakr Siddiq radiallahu anh said, إِيَّاكُمْ وَالْكَلِبْ فَإِنَّهُ مُجَانِبِ iman." Be aware of lying because it is far away from Iman. Here is Iman, the opposite of Iman is Kufr. And he did not say that. He said the opposite of Iman is lying. Connect with the ayah before. Those people who lie about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala are disbelievers. Here he said the other side of belief is lying. Sa'd ibn Abi Waqqas radiallahu anhu said, المؤمن يطبع على الخلال كلها غير الخيانة والكذب. This is a weak hadith. Many people use that hadith. It is actually the saying of the companions. The hadith says يطبع المرء على كل خلق ليس الخيانة والكذب. That a person 
can acquire or can have any kind of bad manner, but not lying and not uh, dishonesty. So this is another one. Look at Umar radiyallahu an yaqul la tablu wa haqiqatan iman hatta tada'a al-kadida fi al-mizah you will not reach the level of really believer, a believer, until you leave lying, even if you're joking. And you're a good person, but once you lie, even in joking, you're still short. You're not up there. Lying is bad, right? Any liars here? Anyone lied in his life? We had some lives. So what happened to you? You repented, right? Alhamdulillah. Lying is not easy, is it? Well, lying is easy. Lying is very easy. Telling the truth is hard. Telling the truth sometimes kills. You know when you have to go against your friend, against your mother, against your parents, in certain situations, that's where we really hard. But, when you picture the hellfire, nothing is hard. Nothing is hard. As long as you think where you're going to be, if you do, then it will not be that hard. But even though lying is so hard, there are situations that you can lie. So I'm going to give you a break here tell you a few things that you can really lie and get rewards too. Why we don't lie? So we can get some rewards, right? Did you ever think that if you don't lie you get rewards? Not really. We don't think about that. I mean, you went to work, you talked, you came home, did you go, Alhamdulillah, today I got rewarded because I didn't lie? Don't well, think about that. It's like a given thing. No, think about it. Because you talked a lot. And in that conversation, you were making sure that you tell the truth. So this is rewards. All the time rewards. It's not only when you come to the masjid or when you do something good, you always think that you say, Alhamdulillah, it's something good. Also, when you stay away from the bad things, say, Alhamdulillah, I got rewards for staying away from it. This is like the Prophet and the companions did not understand intimate relationship between a husband and a wife. He said وسلم, that you get rewards for doing it. The companions said, Oh Prophet of Allah, we do something we really like and we want and we get rewards for it. Look at the, look at the explanation. أَرَأَيْتَ إِنْ وَضَعْتَهُ فِي حَرَامٍ do you see if you fulfilled your desires through haram channel? Are you sinful? He said, yes. He said, well, you did it through halal channel. Then you are rewarded. So we always need to make analogy and think of ourselves. It's not only just when we do good, we are rewarded. Also when we stay away from haram, we are rewarded. Number one. Anytime you lie, where you take the rights of another person, or you cause harm to another person, or you injure the honor of another person, you are committing haram. You are doing a major haram called lying. But in war, lying is not haram. I mean, picture this. You are with the enemy and you get captured or something and it says, where does everybody go? They're right over there. <laughs> You're not going to say that. You're going to try your best to lie and to not to tell. This is natural. And actually, it is rewarding when you don't tell because you don't want to ruin your uh, group. You don't want to ruin your friends and everyone through that and say, Alhamdulillah, I cannot lie, but I have to tell them what everything is. In other words. The second one, Islah Bain al-Mutakhasimah. 
two people having a dispute. Now, you really want to lie. I mean, you don't look for a liar to do that. An honest person is the one who really takes a step forward. Because a liar would never do anything for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. A truthful person comes to do a good lie, and he works good at it. Why? Because he knows he's getting rewards for it. It's like, boy, it's my chance, I've got to do a good lie now. You go to the person and you pass a message, you know, you know, you're talking about the other guy, you know, he is so and so, Allah, the other day, I was with him, and he did not say anything bad about you, actually, I did not even realize or notice that he has a problem with you. And you go to the other person, you tell him that, both of them meet, every one of them have the good picture of the other, they would be racing to who is going to shake hands with the other. That one is racing because he thinks he likes him, and the other one is racing. This is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants and likes. Many of us don't do that. Many of us will go in a much horrible way. They go to this person and they flame him more. He comes and says, no, this person, you don't know him. Now, I'm talking about the fighting person. I am going to make a slide. And then he would say, this guy is, you don't know him, I know you're coming to reconcile, but this guy is bad, he did this so and so, and you'll be sitting and going. Okay, yeah, I see. You confirmed everything he did. <laughs> and instead of coming and saying, no brother, you misunderstand, he is not like that. You're thinking that. This guy cannot express himself. This guy, uh, he talks like that. He doesn't mean it. It's not coming from his heart. And you give an example. This is a life that is loved by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and great reward for it. The next one, everyone loves. And I'm sure all of you liars. For only those who are married. Canada, zawj ala zawjad. Lying to your wife is wonderful. <laughs> you probably do with it anyway, right? But you were not getting rewards for it. Because you get the reward only when you're doing it and you know that this is something in our religion rewarding. Without knowledge, you don't get it. But you know, all of you are happy because it's like, Alhamdulillah, I can lie to my wife. Well, brother, listen to this. Prophet Muhammad sallallahu said, لا يحل الكذب إلا في ثلاث. Lying is haram, prohibited, except three situations. يحدث الرجل امرأته ليرضيها. The man talks to his wife to make her happy and content. If she has a problem with her size, tell her she's so skinny. If she but you know, also a lie can be, you know, we say like, uh, how do you know it is a lie from the size of it? <laughs> so don't come to someone 500 pounds and go, mashallah, you're an athlete. No. Look, and sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, لِيُرْضِيهَا where the wife can do the same. So for those who have lots of mensah, she can tell them, MashaAllah, you know, the kids can slide. <laughs> People think it's bad. No, there's a good aspect. Look at the children sliding on your family. Makes him feel good. So lying, a husband lying to his wife, in anything that strengthens the relationship is okay. And the, the wife can do that. Most of us know that the husband can do it and the wife cannot do it. No, no, they can do the same thing. So there's no harm in always trying to strengthen that relationship. And you know that some people don't do that. Even if it's real, they don't do it. Yeah, look at Islam. How Islam cares for the relationship between a husband and a wife. One thing that I want you to keep in mind, as zawaj and najah, the successful marriage, مَا كَانَ بِنِيَّةْ خِدْمَةِ الزَّوْجِ الْآخَرْ تَقَرُّبًا إِلَى اللَّهِ 
And if you really reflect on that, you will 100% believe it. If you want to see a successful marriage, it is when you find the husband, his main goal is to serve his wife. Serve his wife for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And the wife, her goal is to serve her husband, to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This is a definite success, successful marriage. When the husband does what he does, he controls his anger because it's like I'm a slave to my wife. We all are, right? <laughs> and she is a slave to me. I do everything because it's pleasing to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I control my anger. I overlook some, some of the mistakes that happens. I compliment her. I help her because I see myself as a slave to her for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And if she sees that herself, that she is a slave to me for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then who is going to say who is the boss of the house? Or where would that even have a place to even talk about it? It wouldn't. Because when you do it, things for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, if you truly love someone, you serve him. And you would be happy serving him. And that is something that we really need to reflect. By the way, I give you yeah, and there's good news. If you go to sunnahfollowers.net, you can order a CD that talks about the evil actions of lowering the gaze, like lowering the gaze and some other evil action of the heart and the tongue, put together in one CD that's available on sunnahfollowers.net if you wanted to buy. One person sent me an email yesterday referring to one of those she was going to divorce, heading for divorce for sure. She bought the CD and she asked her husband, it is because of a problem that her husband has, referring to not lowering the gaze. She asked her husband to sit and listen to the, uh, CD, the DVD and he refused, but he was somewhere in the room where he can hear. So she was listening to it, and he was listening to it, but indirectly, without her knowing. And then toward the end, she said that he came and he was crying, and he repented, and alhamdulillah, solved the uh, marriage problem. Brothers, you have no idea what a person can do sometimes and restore a major relationship between a brother uh, and a brother, between a sister and a sister, between a husband and a wife. All it takes is someone to take an initiative. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, leave the rest to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I want to conclude with you about something that we all know, Kebet uh, Nisan, the lie of April, or April, April's fool. Right? Remember that? Listen to this. The history of that uh, April uh, Fool's. What do you call it? April Fool's. April Fool's Lie? April Fool's, no. April Fool's Day. April Fool's Day. This is the day that is known the day of Al Hamka wal Mughaffali. This is the day of those who are crazy and heedless. That's the label. Uh, the English people use that name for the lies that they used to say and people used to believe in it. The person, they lie to the person, the person believes in it and he becomes a victim. A victim in, in, in the real sense. Like uh, you, you give a lie about something that may end up to losing his life or killing someone else based on that lie. So this is the way they use it. The first, it says also the first lie of April, mentioned in the English language uh, in a magazine, and this is like the second day of April, 18, uh, 1698. This magazine mentioned that a number of people, they have received an invitation uh, to receive something, washing of something 
in uh, near the tower in London, and they went all there, and there was nothing there. So this is an invitation, everyone has to come. Well, get to the next one, in the worse. The second one, invitation for people to go, and guess what? Watch animals. There is a show for donkeys near an agricultural building. Everyone is invited to watch a show for donkeys. Everyone gathered, waited and waited and waited and waited. Nothing is there. It turned out to be what? They are the donkeys. <laughs> It's a show for themselves looking at one another. The real meaning or real name, it's not really uh, April, it's not April's full day, it, it, is, it is a trick. It is the trick of April. And, and this has also uh, an Islamic origin. Uh, when Muslims were, uh, a long time ago, when they were uh, ruling uh, Spain, Like, there was so much power there that everyone was trying to expel them. And they could not do anything. They started to see what is the source of the power of the Muslims. And they found out what? Take a look at this. What is it? Truth. Their faith. So this is the only way that they can Brother, when you, when you have faith, when you are connected with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, there's nothing about that. So they wanted to do something to ruin that, and guess what they did? They started to, from the outside, to uh, give their youngsters alcohol and cigarettes until the young generation were raised on alcohol and cigarettes and that led to the destruction of the young generation that led to the same thing to the uh, loss or the expel uh, you know the Muslims were expelled from uh, Spain as a result of that so they were celebrating that day for those crazy people who lost the last battle in Spain in Vernata. What is the meaning in Vernata in Arabic? Vernata. Vernata. Cordoba? Cordoba, I think. Cordoba. Hassan. Cordoba, yeah. This is the last one that they lost in. And this, at April Fool's Day, was meant for that, but it went as general for everyone else. But we know for a fact, this never happened the time of the companions of the Allah or the time of the Tabi'in. This is haram in our religion because joking is haram and uh, any form of lying is haram unless it is for those three things that we have mentioned. With this, my friends, we conclude the topic of lying and we will be inshallah selecting some other topic. Some people want to talk about something else, but uh, I may continue until uh, with another topic until I leave for three months. I know it's a short trip to go back home, visit with the family. I'll be leaving May 20th, coming back August 20th. Then when we come back, we'll do a real good series that everybody was requesting. You know what it is? Mm. Sira? Well, if you said that, I'm not even going to say it. Because it's way away from that. You want Sira? So I'm going to say it. Maybe we can do two days. One day in Arlington, the brother would come, right? <laughs> okay, two days here. Fine. We'll keep it one day, inshallah. We plan on that. If you have any questions, you have a very good. This, inshallah. Go ahead. Is it